She's a character who's led to controversy and split camps of fans into those who love her or hate her. I, of course, am talking about Lapis Lazuli. From her rough, rocky start with the gems, to her powers, to her experience with trauma, to what exactly her real world gem is like. We're covering it all today. What's up, y'all? I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm talking to you about Lapis Lazuli from Steven Universe. Before we get to Lapis, I wanna give a shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon, especially super nerd sponsor, Kevin Brown. You can head over to our Patreon to support us, or you can click our affiliate link to get some amazing swag from Tee Public. You'll look rad, and we'll get to keep the lights on. It's a win-win. If you can't put your hard-earned cash to anything right now, remember, liking, sharing, and subscribing are awesome ways to show us here at Nerdwire your support. Now, let's get to this polarizing character. I'm Lapis Lazuli, and you can't keep me trapped here anymore! Lapis Lazuli, or Bob if you're going off of her hit the diamond alias, was caught up in the rebellion despite not being a rebel. She was mistaken for a crystal gem and was imprisoned in a mirror. There, she would remain for thousands of years until she's given to Steven from Pearl. Pearl believes this mirror is some gem artifact that can teach Steven about the gem's history, since the mirror is capable of showing whoever holds it any event it was present for since its creation. Lapis begins communicating with Steven from within the mirror and convinces him to free her by removing the mirror's gemstone and then shattering the mirror. Once free, Lapis tries to return to Homeworld, basically tries to steal all the ocean to book it off Earth, gets captured by Peridot and Jasper, fuses with Jasper to form Malachite, which Lapis only does to trap Jasper at the bottom of the ocean and take her anger out on her. Like I said, rough start. Yikes. Once she unfuses, she realizes her only choice is to remain on Earth since she basically kidnapped and ultra waterboarded one of Homeworld's most decorated soldiers. Lapis moves into the barn with a now reformed and fully fledged crystal gem Peridot, who works tirelessly to win Lapis over and become her friend. Over time, they become very close. Despite their friendship and Lapis learning to trust Steven and the other gems, she leaves once again when another war with Homeworld is on the horizon. Rather than stay and fight, she uplifts the barn, her home with Peridot, and moves it to the moon, where she hides until returning to Earth to fight against the diamonds in the episode Reunited. In theory, Lapis could be the strongest warrior in the series. With her hydrokinesis, she can harness the power of water in amazing ways, from matter state manipulations to making water clones to generating water. These are all super cool powers. She also has water wings that she can summon that are strong enough to allow her to fly from here to other planets. In addition to her water powers, Lapis is also able to project memories and is pathokinetic resistant. When Blue Diamond tries to use her pathos powers on Lapis, Lapis is barely affected, claiming, I felt worse. This is probably tied up in her emotional journey, which we will be definitely diving into. Jasper sees this power and desperately wants it, knowing it can cause some real destruction on Earth. Jasper tries to manipulate Lapis against the Crystal Gem, saying, they kept you prisoner, they used you. This is your chance to take revenge. And she does, but on Jasper. Jasper's a character that takes advantage of and misuses their power constantly. Once fused with Jasper, Lapis is able to be the main gem in charge and drags their fusion malachite beneath the ocean. Fusions are the embodiment of trust, understanding, and love between two beings. This fusion malachite was obviously anything but. Malachite traps two characters in a tangible manifestation of an abusive relationship. Lapis's trauma takes physical form here, with her believing she needs to sacrifice herself and her ability to exist alone in order to stop Malachite. Once Lapis is unfused, she's still deeply traumatized. Water, a source from which she derives her power from, makes her nervous and reminds her of her second imprisonment. We then see the toxic, codependent nature of the Malachite fusion when, in Alone at Sea, Jasper reappears and Lapis tells her that the fusion made her feel good, saying, I like taking everything out on you. I needed you. I hated you. What seems like a sacrifice play becomes a much more nuanced exploration of abuse, codependency, and PTSD. I was terrible to you. I liked taking everything out on you. I needed to, I, I hated you. It was bad. Now, many viewers found this revelation as Lapis admitting she was just as abusive as Jasper. Others felt this was Lapis merely adopting tactics in order to survive. I don't think either of these views are wrong. I think both are true. Survival is complicated. In the Steven Universe podcast, creator Rebecca Sugar described Lapis as someone who had constantly been taken advantage of, that her kindness had always been exploited. Lapis needed to feel in control. So her forming Malachite and taking out her anger on Jasper was an exercise in control. But when they separated, she had to address that she wanted someone to feel just as bad as her. She lives in constant fear, and she has more to fear than the other gems because she's seen the true cruelty of Homeworld. 
And even though she's faced some real horrors, Lapis isn't hopeless or completely withdrawn. In fact, we see she wants companionship very badly in episodes like Can't Go Back. Maybe I'm tired of running away. Maybe I'd rather be with everyone and be in danger than be safe and alone. The behaviors she exhibit line up with anxiety disorders and PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD is what most Redditors commonly associate Lapis with, and for good reason. PTSD is a condition in which individuals experience high levels of fear, stress, and anxiety after traumatic events. These episodes can occur anytime, anywhere, and are closely linked to combat on the battlefield or from various forms of abuse. There are four main groups of symptoms for PTSD. One, re-experience the trauma to the point the individual relives it in a negative way. Two, avoidance symptoms, staying away from places or objects associated with the trauma. Three, reactivity symptoms, where an individual may feel angry, tense, or have trouble sleeping for no immediate reason. Four, Cognition and mood symptoms, where an individual may have a hard time recalling the specifics of what happened to them, which in turn causes heightened feelings of sadness and turmoil. We see Lapis exhibit all of these symptoms at some point, from replaying the trauma, to avoiding water, to her outbursts and attitude. The argument for Lapis having this seems pretty strong. Plus, Lapis has not one, but two traumatic events that led to this disorder, her time in the mirror and the emotional toll that that took as well as her prolonged fusion. What I really love about seeing a character deal with this on screen, though, is that we see positive coping mechanisms such as negative thought replacement. In Can't Go Back, Lapis begins to spiral, saying, I can't just go back to Earth. Not after the way I left. What would Peridot say? What if the diamonds show up? What if something bad happens? To which Steven simply responds, well, what if something good happens? What if something bad happens? Well, what if something good happens? This may seem like the sweet sentiment of a good friend, but this sort of talk therapy is actually really beneficial and a big part of cognitive behavioral therapy. We see exposure therapy being used when Stephen wants to give Lapis a positive experience with the ocean, and until Jasper shows up, executes that form of therapy successfully. He's patient, he safely exposes her to the ocean, and keeps her talking. Stephen is gentle with Lapis. There's no public shaming, and he doesn't give her some big monologue on getting over it. He does the best thing for his friend. I tell you all of this still saying that trauma does not excuse a person's bad behavior. I hear you guys about how she's treated Peridot, and I agree. A lot of Lapis's choices do seem selfish. Everyone has had bad things happen to them, some worse than others, much worse. But it doesn't mean you get to treat people, especially those that love you, like crap. It explains it, but it doesn't excuse it. To borrow from Michelle McNamara, it's all chaos. Be kind. You got room for one more? Of course. Now that we've explored the character, let's talk about the actual Lapis Gemstone. Lapis Lazuli has been used in jewelry for thousands of years. Its name comes from the Arabic word Lazrog, which the word Azur comes from, both of which mean blue. Egyptians revered the stone, calling them heavenly, and using them to adorn the statues of their gods in burial masks in order to protect the dead as they journeyed into the next life. Ancient Sumerians took this notion a step further by believing the souls of gods lived within these stones. I freaked out over this fact, you guys. It's like the whole premise of the gem race. So next time someone gives you crap for watching a cartoon, you remember that there's some epic Sumerian research possibly at work here. Lapis lazuli has been used to ward off evil for thousands of years. The Greeks and Romans used it as a reward for bravery, and both the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians believed it could cure melancholy. So again, we have something here that could have inspired the gem. If Peridot wards off jealousy, but the character of Peridot is jealous, or Lapis wards off sadness, but Lapis, the character, is sad, then maybe these gems take on the attributes they supposedly vanquish. I think that'd be cool to look into. And I intend to. Remember when Brett had me write like a thousand scripts on Avatar? Buckle up for all Steven Universe all the time. We're all extremely attractive. Let's go get jobs as models. Hey! Hey, so while I was researching, I ran across this thing called gem elixirs. They're called gem elixirs or crystal essences or crystal waters, whatever you want to call them. It's basically fancy rock water that you ingest to get the benefits of the crystals, their vibrations and such. There are two primary methods to make this water, direct and indirect. Direct means that you place the crystal directly in the water, like you're making sun tea. You pour water into a glass container, plop the crystal in, then place it in the sunlight or moonlight for a few hours. The direct method requires extreme caution because many crystals are toxic, including, you guessed it, lapis. Lapis is specifically extremely toxic in water because it contains pyrite, which has traces of sulfur inside it. So we have a crystal gem with water powers who's been trapped in toxic environments 
and a gem that can become toxic when placed in wet environments? Blah! I feel like Charlie Day doing his mailroom freak out when it's always sunny. I'm gonna just make a weird gemstone conspiracy map in the office. Rebecca Sugar, talk to me about this sort of stuff. Let me know if it inspired you, dude. Before we get to the outro, I brought in this dumb lip gloss I have that has little gems inside it and I only bought it because I thought it was cool. And now I'm like, am I slowly poisoning myself? Am I gonna die because of this impulse buy at Sephora? Probably. What gems are it? I think it's supposed to be like little amethysts, but they can't be real ones because those are like wicked expensive, right? It's cute. Yeah. Bring us again when we do the amethyst. Okay. Yay. Of course, my musings are simply that. Musings. Does the crystal data and history have anything to do with Lapis? Do you like her a little more now? Or are you still a no-go on Team Lapis Peridot? Tell me how you feel about her and her relationship with the other gems in the comments below. You're really here. Hey. If you're dealing with anxiety, PTSD, or anything else, please know there are so many resources to get help, and that getting help is completely okay. In the description below, we'll link you to a site that can help out. For more videos, click to the left of my face, or for sweet Steven Universe merch, click on that affiliate link in the bottom. Thanks again to all of our supporters, and thank you for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.